So I've been wanting to build my own keyboard uh, for a little while now, and I found these plans for the Atrius keyboard that I really like. It's an ergonomic keyboard. Um, but it's an open source project as well, so it's open source hardware. Here's the LaserCut uh, designs for it. So I just downloaded this directly from their GitHub page, um, and I had this LaserCut. You can buy this kit already. You can buy it pre-assembled or buy it in kit form, but I'm actually choosing to build the kit completely from scratch. So I sent in uh, these to an online site. I'll include the link in the description of this video. And um, it just cut. So this is the top plate here. There's these in-between plates and a bottom plate and some different parts. It has all the holes. You can uh, put it together with screws. And then the keys actually sit in here. So I ordered all the parts separately. Every individual key. It has 42 keys. I'm just using key caps from a keyboard that I had uh, laying around. So that's great. But then I'm using these uh, Gatoron uh, green switches I think are going to fit in here. I ordered some reds as well, some cherry reds just in case. Um, and I may mix and match a little bit, but I really like these green switches. And then the switches need a diode, so every one of them has a diode, so I'll be using 42 diodes. And then the controller that this uses is the Pro Micro, like an Arduino. And so the switches will tie into this, and then this also has a USB port so I can communicate uh, with my computer, of course. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's everything. So this should be a really, really cool build. Um, I'm not using a PCB for this build, like a, an electronic circuit board, like the green or tan boards you see. Usually the, or sometimes you can get a switch that'll just go into there, and it has all the traces and, and routes for the uh, switches to communicate with the board, with the controller board. I'm not doing that, so I'm gonna have to do everything just with wires to talk to this Arduino. So it's, this is truly a from the ground up uh, project of just building a keyboard as much from scratch as I can without making my own keycaps and without making my own mechanical switches. But everything else is kind of just sourced the bare components. So it should be a fun build. So it might even kind of look like, you can see some burn marks, it looks a little bit like wood in this condition. What this is, this is just like a sticky, like a sticky kind of wax paper. But uh, yeah, these are what the pieces are. I guess I went with black, I was debating between doing like more of a transparent green or blue or black. But uh, this black I think is going to look really good, I guess that's what I decided to go with. So the switches fit in here pretty good, that's the one thing I was kind of worried about was if they would fit, and they seem to fit really well. So both the Gatoron and the MX, um, I think the instructions actually said only use MX switches, uh, like the Cherry switches, I mean. But this is a, this is a Gatoron, like a kind of similar. They'll, they'll take the same keycap, but this is just a little bit more clicky, and they're a little bit less expensive. keys are in now these will these will pop out if I press on them too hard so they're not really snug in there I could put a little bit of glue some people glue them in a little bit you can hot glue or you can super glue um, you'll notice I have if I lay it down here I have some red some red switches and then mostly green so what I want to do is have that tactile feel uh, with these greens when I'm typing and the reds are for kind of more like function keys like or shift and control and that so I have, this This is the key map for it. So you can see I kind of did the control and the alt and the space and the function. Oh no, space I did the green. But the reds are control, alt, function, uh, super, shift, and escape key. So that's what I did, kind of the ones I chose. I've seen some other people do something similar. Sometimes people do the whole bottom row in a different key, or a lot of people just do the same uh, switches for all the board, but. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. So the next step is going to be to wire in the diodes and start connecting all of these and then get them con uh, get them attached to the controller. I moved to a desk upstairs. I'm going to do some soldering and there's not good ventilation in the basement where I was before. But I sort of like roughly put this together. Uh, I'll include the size of these. I just bought these on Amazon so it's just a little Phillips head screw. And uh, so this is what the whole case is going to look like. It's just all just black acrylic. I should have went with something more with more personality now that I think about it. 
But uh, so this is the bottom of the keyboard here. And these just are just have some nuts. I, I prefer having the nut on top. I think it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and then so it's a Phillips head on the back. They, these also come in like a hex head, which I also like. So now I'm going to take this off. These aren't wired in yet. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to use the hot glue gun to glue the keys into place a little bit because they kind of pop out really easy. Uh, so I'll glue them in. These rows are all hooked together. I need to get an insulated wire or just some sort of connection to connect these. So there's going to be a total of four rows. One, two, three, four. On this build, there's an, a version of the Atrius that has five, but this one only has four. And then these two here need to be a little bit different. So these ones, I could include them all in one row, I think, but the instructions I'm looking at online say to have this one be included in this row here and this one be included in this bottom row. So this will be like if we do four rows, one, two, three, four, this will be in the third row, and this will be in the fourth row. I'll show you pictures when that's done. That seems to be the way to do it. I think it could be done any number of ways, and it's just a matter of adjusting the software a little bit. Now that I've completed my soldering, I just want to test. I did a visual inspection and looked at some of these solder joints. They're not all the prettiest, but they look like they are all a good solid connection. But to make sure, I've got my uh, multimeter here, and I've just set it to this setting right here, which is continuity, so it just lets me know, like if these get touched together, it makes a beeping sound. Oops. So it shows like yeah, resistance basically through there. And so what we're going to do is, I can connect on here, if I can do it with one hand or not. <laughs> Let me just push this on here. So we make a connection on this row, like that. And then we'll come over here, and so we find row 2 over on this side and touch. And so that's connected. That tells us this whole line here is connected. 
So we have a nice solid connection all the way from there to there. We can do the same thing over here. I should probably get some different, uh, just showing you for an example how this works. Connect this one. So that one's good. Then I do the same thing on these columns to make sure all these red ones are connected too. So I can touch here and here and make sure that they're all going. So I'll go through and test everything. If everything's good there, then we'll install the microcontroller. This can be kind of tricky soldering in this microcontroller. I've got this little stand. These are pretty cheap to buy on uh, like Amazon or eBay. So I'm just grabbing it here so it's sort of holding. And then um, I strip the wire very, very, very short. And then I just stick it uh, through like this on the, on the underside. Let's see if I can do this while I'm filming. Yeah. So this is the pin that this one needs to go in just like that. And if I can get it to stay, so it's just sitting in there now. And then I go ahead and just solder it. I can't do it while I'm holding the camera, but that's the, the method I'm doing. I'm just leaving them all unconnected right now. And then I'm gonna turn this board and place it right in here. But uh, this is the way I'm doing it. So rather than trying to solder from on top, I'm just soldering from underneath. Well, the microcontroller is all wired up now. And so I'm gonna place it where it's going to go. I might even use a little bit of hot glue to put it in place. Or I might just try and like put it underneath. I think I'll put it just underneath this and this wire will hold it in place. And then um, I just need to put all of these. I used blue for the uh, rows and yellow for the columns. So I need to put these on the rows and columns that they go on. And we'll go from there. All the rows and columns are wired together now and wired into the Pro Micro, the microcontroller. Um, it's just sort of sitting here. I, I unsoldered this blue wire, this kind of bridge one between the this row number one. And so the, the board's kind of secured in there, but I'm just gonna put a, a little bit of hot glue. I'm just gonna dab a teeny tiny bit in the corners here just to keep it sitting there. And then I haven't decided yet if I, I might attach a, uh, I might try and have it so I can plug an external cable into the keyboard instead of having a, a wire coming out of the board. All right, so the board is all wired up now. The next step, is to uh, flash the code. So I'm gonna download the code, it's already written, but we're gonna plug in this USB cable which is plugged into the computer, and we're gonna plug it into the Pro Micro, and uh, then we're gonna flash. So this has a, a memory chip, you can actually flash code to it, and then when you unplug it, it remembers that code. So we're gonna tell it what happens when these uh, keys are pressed, and we're gonna tell it that it needs to interact with the computer as a keyboard, and identify itself as a keyboard and things like that. So let's move on to that step. All right, so here's what I did. I couldn't do it live in the video. It's my first time do, playing with the Pro Micros. So I made this little tiny jumper because there's no reset button. To, so to actually reset it, uh, there's two pins here. I'll show you on this one. You can see ground and reset. I don't know if, you can, if I can focus it on this or not. So I'm gonna flip this over and here's what we do. I've got my nice jumper cable here. So that's where I want to short, is right in there. But first, I'm going to enter this command here. This is the command specifically for the Atrius keyboard with the PCB down um, flag. And so we'll hit enter there. Oh, what did it say? Why do I have an M at the end of that? I need to get rid of that M. All right, here we go. That's better. That got it, it found it. Some Arduino, some boards have a button you can do. So this looks like everything is flashed in there. So now let's flip it around um, and we'll see if we can type on here. So I would expect the Q to be right here. I'm not seeing anything though. Hmm. Q's working there. K, so we got K right there. So this is on the keyboard, K. I think that's what it was last time. J, K, J, H, L. Oh, that's right. So that's actually how it's supposed to be, right? No, not exactly. And nothing's working here. Oh, interesting. 
Well, let me play around again. Maybe that hex file I'm using has got a problem with it. All right, so I have everything done now and everything is mapped correctly. I tested all the keys. It's just the QWERTY keyboard layout, so so it's, it should feel like a normal keyboard. Everything's working properly. I had to play a little bit. Um, I had to just change around right here, these matrix rows a little bit, and then um, the actual columns. So the pins that I put them on just weren't the, working with the default configuration here. That's just my bad. I should have done that a little bit differently, but at least I, I kind of learned the process of making changes to this config file. I wanted to show this config.h file real quick. So there's a couple things. You've got your key map, which I'm just using the, the default one right now. So this is just the default key map. It just shows like where to map all these keys based on the columns and the rows. But the actual columns and rows we need to set are just in here. So we've got four columns. Well, first of all, it says, how many rows do you have? Four, how many columns? 11. And then you map them to the different pins on the microcontroller. And so that's where I had to do was kind of play around and change some of these around a little bit. But I finally got it uh, working okay, flashed it to there, tested everything is working good. Now I think I can finally put it all together, put the keycaps on. I'm just going to keep this cord for now. I'm going to make a more fancy uh, cord for it. But uh, let me put it back together real quick. I have these cool keycaps. It's like a blue gradient. They weren't that expensive. I want to say 25 maybe. 25 or 30 dollars for the for the keycap set not counting the black keys but they're a really nice uh, pbt keycap with the mx anyway it's what i want to put on this atrius build i was debating between that or this guy which is super cool too but uh i'm gonna do the i'm gonna do these guys so the way these go on here is uh, they just push right on over top so I just want to be really careful not to, because, uh, you know, these were hot glued in. I'm pretty sure if I pull too hard, I could pull these out. So once I put these on, they're going to stay on here. So um, the way to pull these off is with a tool like this. So just grab on and then lift up and it comes right off. There's also a, a different kind of tool like this you can use as well and you push over top. But it can scratch the sides of the keys, so I prefer this method. Uh, you can even sometimes pull them off with your fingers. All right, so I'll go ahead and put those keycaps on, and then we'll be able to do some typing and testing with the new Atrius build.